Big job on players, but we'll see what changes here. Another Rek'Sai band for Chiefs, this time on the blue side. Callista band away from ready here by the Direwolves, and we're all reset here as we move into game two. So the red side advantage does go to Direwolves this game. I'll say advantage, just because look, every team in the playoffs has picked the red side. So obviously the value of last pick has been uh, outweighing any potential of snapping up an early champion. It's just a sign of patch 5.6 where the balance levels, honestly, that's why we see so many champions in competitive is there's no real must-pick, must-ban champions at, at, in terms of first picks. And so the die was, we saw Chiefs last pick the Anivia, did so much work for them. What will they be able to last pick for? Because I have a sneaking suspicion it's going to be for the top line. Yeah, it's going to be for perfection, you have to think. And Hecarim has been banned away from him again. Shivana, there's some respect over to Swiper, who saw a play on the champion in their semi-final and Urgot banned away there by the Chiefs. So Urgot's a very powerful pick. Of course, it punishes AD carries. Radius 707. Apologies to him when we're talking about MVPs. One of the ways to hold down a hyper carry AD carry player is to pick up the Urgot. Of course, Sharp can also look to play it in the mid lane to keep down one of those more powerful picks, like say Twisted Fate, for example. Once again, it's the Siva priority put on by the Chiefs. Yeah, and Nivea the last ban actually from the Chiefs, so gonna take away that mid lane pick, but lots open now potentially. Only the one ban this time actually up against Perfection with the Hecarim, so Dialogue's a lot of room to maneuver, and they're gonna get the Janna and the Scion, exactly the first two picks the Chiefs got. And the mirror picks in general. Siva was your first pick from the from the Dialogues in game one. The priority seems to be very similar for these teams. Where the draft goes from here, that'll be interesting, and wow, wow. Swiper had some massive carry performances in the semifinals. That's a notable fact, because previous to the semifinals, definitely been that tank role player. But I believe 18 kills or so on this Aurelia over two games did massive work. And Nautilus is either going to be a support or jungle, you'd have to think. Yeah, fairly big pick there for both of the top laners, actually. So Aurelia, they're coming through. Uh, and uh, along with Nautilus, have to think it's jungle at this point. Could, of course, be a support as well. So a bit of flexibility there. But the Wol uh, Chiefs are trying to cut away some of the options from the Direwolves. In terms of flex picks, just because we know these teams so well, the Direwolves in particular, they don't really have a lot of flex picks because Perfection's not a Scion player. Of course, he could play that champion, but he's been needed by his team to play more carry champions. You'd have to think that Scion's going to Soul Strikes in the jungle. Vladimir, expected to be a top lane, could be a mid lane champion. I could see it fitting Sharp's playstyle to some degree. The Nautilus, though, that is a flex pick coming through from the Chiefs. It could be support. We could see the return of engaged support Rosie, or it could be Spooks in the jungle. Yeah, and Corky there, the 80 carry pickup for King. Bit of a wonky matchup up against the Siva. Probably one of the better ones still left in the AD carry pool as far as Siva matchups go. But we'll see what the Chiefs want to pick away. They've got two picks to make here. And as we've said, teams really seem to want the red side. So the Chiefs are going to make some of these picks blind. They're going to have to blind pick their soul laners. That's just the reality of being on the blue side. We're waiting to see what they're looking to pick up in this situation. They've already got their AD carry top laner and we'd assume jungle support. They're actually taking a lot of time to decide. On the Dial Wars side, you see a lot of engage, a lot of turret damage coming through from the Corky, you'd have to think. And there's the locking. Gragas finally sees his appearance in this game. And Twisted Fate, that's a blind pick mid laner. Not showing a lot of respect to Sharp. There's a lot of potential bad matchups for Twisted Fate. What does he have available to punish a blind pick TF? I'm not sure, but that should be Gragas' jungle, you have to think here, unless Rosie is going really off the deep end this time. And he's at a pretty narrow champion pool. Nautilus. If he takes it, and that's the assumption here, that's already a far cry from a lot of what he played, both in the playoffs and in the regular OPL season. The Dialves, though, do have one pick left here, and it is going to be, you have to think, probably a pick for the mid lane, sorry, of course. And it was open last game. Sharp didn't take it, but he might go back to the comfort zero. But this is a situation where Sharp's champion pull starts to shine through. Twisted Fate actually made his triumphant return to the meta as a counter pick to Xerath, because, of course, is able to match Xerath's wave clear, then exit lane, and Xerath has to only can really roam with his ultimate to some degree. So in this situation, this is not a pick that really punishes Twisted Fate in lane. So the first Destiny, it could be game decided. We already saw an early level one fight really decide the tone of our first game of the series. Destiny is what we're going to be looking for in this game. And the last time this happened to the Dialogues, I'm sure they're getting some not so happy flashbacks of their OPL games this split. Perfection was the target of many a destiny here by Swiffer, so the Chiefs might be back on the old camp perfection plan. Yeah, it was Chiefs versus Dials game one where they really punished him on the rumble, I believe, that game. First the Aurelia really working him down, then the roam from the jungler, then the teleport coming in from Twisted Fate. Look, he'll take what he can get with the destiny, but man, he's going to be looking towards that top line. And that's the thing, when you give Swiper Aurelia, that's the other thing that shifts for the Chiefs. No longer is he just there self-sufficient on a tank. Spooks is up there in his lane. Swiffer might be there in his lane as well. 
well, getting him ahead. And as soon as Aurelia starts to tip the balance of a lane, she takes over. And you notice the one thing you can say about this draft page time is when they lose the Janna, when they lose the disengaged support, they just get the disengaged jungler. Because to some degree, that explosive cask, it's pretty much a ranged monsoon. Yeah, I mean, that's a different thing here for Spooks. Great thing to point out. I've heard Gragas actually compared by Spawn, of course, one of our color commentators here, likens it most to Lee Sin. And if there's ever a big Lee Sin player in Oceania, it's probably Spooks. A lot of early damage coming through. The gap closed with the body slam. And then the ultimate, that's the unique factor. So much disengage and help potentially engage. I mean, we'll see what he does with it, but it should be early aggression again here for the Chiefs. They're about to break out of the base here for our second game in the Chiefs. Upper game here in this best of five grand final. The Dial is going to look to answer back and make it a best of three. You have to think it's a must win game for the Dials just to get a bit of momentum. Giving away a 2 0 makes every game a potential decider for the Chiefs if you're a Dials fan. And honestly, a lot of it to me is on Sharp and Soul Strikes. Can they make Swiffer accountable? Either punish him with his weak laning phase or take his turret? Because if Twisted Fate can just clear waves and then show up with the Destiny, it's always going to be advantage Chiefs. And that was the biggest thing for Soul Strikes' play in the split that's not reflected in his champions like Sejuani. He was a great reactive ganker. We talk about the uh, top and bottom lanes overextending for the dials. It was Soul Strike that sort of kept the balance there of the pendulum, you have to think. Just moving back and forth, making sure everyone's okay, and getting them through their long laning phases. When you, do, when you have a, a more reactive champion like Sejuani, Soul Strikes can't do that. So can he do it here on Scion? And Scion's such an interesting pick, Pastry Time. It's definitely a Soul Strike special. We haven't seen a lot of jungle Scion anywhere, really. It's been an OPL trademark. He's 2-1, and one, I believe, on that champion at this point. Played it twice during the semifinals. Speaking to Spooks previous to the game, he actually said he wasn't a big fan of the Scion jungle. He didn't really see the validity of it. In this situation, though, one thing I can tell you about Scion, although he has a lot of setup, you can see him channeling that decimating smash. Takes a lot of time. Does a surprising amount of damage in early skirmishes. So if you have set up CC in the lanes, whether it's a giant knockout, whether it's a stun coming through from Xerath, you can actually do a lot of work in early ganking as Scion. And that's what Soul Strikes wants to do. Apply some of the early pressure, get his aggressive lane as a head, get Perfection a comfortable lane, get King ahead who's on the corky here in this game for quite a surprising pick. But we're looking for a lane swap. Swiper and Spooks will start the Gromp together and Siva already trying in the top lane. Yeah, it's actually a blue side initiated lane swap coming through from the Chiefs. We see Gragas with the jungle follow as you said if we do see a support room that's a lot of support uh, what a lot of room and CC potential between the Gragas and the Nautilus. Perfection though actually cleared away a camp, I believe, on his own. Perfection has done this multiple times on surprising champions. It was Nautilus in the semi-final where he did the same thing to the Raptor camp, but that man always finds a camp to clear. And it. this is with Vladimir. This wasn't a solo clear. You actually saw Jana on the minimap walking over to help him just because Vladimir, it's not a viable jungler. He doesn't actually have short cooldowns at level one, especially, so needed the help from the Jana. But as you mentioned, gonna eventually en enter lane level two or better. And I wonder where Perfection wants to go now. Actually walking into his jungle, which is quite dangerous. As three Chiefs are there already. Perfection will face check it. Knows what's going on now. Can't do anything, unfortunately, but it will at least get some information. It's a very high risk check, as you say. This is vertical jungling with the lane swap initiated by Chiefs. You can tell that they're working on the blue side. They have four members on the top side of the jungle. So that should be basically an area that Dials aren't able to enter, but so confident. He's actually going to pick up the Raptors. That's a camp that shouldn't have been going going over to the Dials. It's going to be a bonus, you'd have to say, for the Dials. Yeah, a bonus for sure here is Soul Strikes will get the red buff away with the help of Chuffa. Support's actually following the jungler for the Dials. Nautilus has rejoined Sivir in the top lane, though, for the Chiefs. Chuffa doing a good job roaming around, and that's leaving Perfection some free camps. Again, Vladimir Jungle, not too sure how much work he's going to get done, but Perfection doesn't want to enter that lane. Exactly, he doesn't need to enter the lane. Realistically, he's not in range of being able to get any experience. He hasn't skilled pull by level two. He's needed both his Q and E to be able to clear down camps. So, so scary to overextend against a Nautilus support of all things. So just getting bonus experience around the map and honestly seven to two it's worked out i've never thought i'd say this but the jungle follow from vladimir has been better than the jungle follow from aurelia and that's because he's soloing the camps he's actually not following which is the interesting part of soul strike gets a scott crab there but perfection again at this point he's used to getting lane swapped on he's found very creative ways and his team really helps him in the early game situations but swiper is now down in the bottom getting the experiences the way he's pushed in and that hard for is still going on in the top lane and despite having a lane swap initiated on them it's actually been dire what's pick up extra gold in the early stage of the game just because again Vladimir has done surprising amount of jungling it wasn't been zoned away like Swiper who's finally now under turret able to get some CS uh, 
Swiper entered lane a lot earlier, but doing fine. And I actually like the swap here for the Wolves, interestingly. Don't normally like seeing Perfection swapped on, but they answered very nicely with a lot of his early jungling, holding down Aurelia a little bit, and most importantly, getting the Corky out of the Civil lane. CC crew's coming yeah, in. Yeah, Spooks is here as well. We are going to join in with the Nautilus on Soul Strikes, trying to counter jungle, but instead just going to barrel. Might have a smite off here. Has actually just give up the camp instead, and the Chiefs rotating in. They're going to try and get a kill, maybe Chuffer going to join in. He's only level two, though, and Soul Strikes does get the Grump. Yeah, of course, it's not a counter jungle for Soul Strikes. He's on the defensive side of the map. It looked like Chiefs were trying to look around the Dragon area, despite the fact that they're jungling on the top side of the jungle. So in terms of like identifying the points of power, at this point, it feels like the jungle's up for grabs for whoever shows up first. And when we're talking about Nautilus Gragas, you just get away. Yeah, Gold Rush rules right now for the jungle campers. Perfection will join Radiant. Now getting uh, taken down quite low, actually, Rady with the good early damage on the AD carry. And of course, Vlad needs to scale up. Doran Shield helping out a little bit, but Perfection starting to get some CS and experience from the lane. But you definitely take Siva in the early levels. Vladimir lanes like this only start to tip around the level 7 to 9 when you get 4 or 5 points in that transfusion and critically pick up the Hextech Revolver. In this laning matchup, it's a lot more risky for the Vlad. So it's just going to hang back, happy to give away CS. He's falling a little bit behind the Aurelia, but as long as he's picking up the experience, Experience. Vladdy scales with items, but damn, he also scales with levels too. Yeah, and again, just trying to navigate the awkward early stages. That has isolated this mid lane, though, of course, since Swiffer, almost level 6, gone back very swiftly and got himself cooldown boots already. And Diewolves, they really haven't done any defensive warding in this situation. At this point, if Swiffer ent exits the mid lane, it is going to be completely... Uh, hypothetical to Dylos to work out which lane he's going to be going to. At this point, though, with the posturing, it's going to be tough. Looks like top indeed. Their pull is forced out there by perfection. Actually, just dodged the passive from Rosie as well. So gets out nicely. There was some, again, great mechanics like we expect. But Spooks is here as well. The camp has started, but Perfection, not interested. Going straight back to the Tier 2 turret. But Chuff has been so slow to roam. He finally roams at six minutes. They have no defensive wards around mid. They finally get one towards the red side. So they'll spot Twisted Fate if he moves towards the bottom lane. But in top lane, they have no vision at all. Yeah, Perfection and Soul Strikes do get the Krugs. The Chiefs even looking to take that away from them. But an aggressive ward down. We're going to start quite the proxy is Swiper down the bottom. We'll go down in the Rome not there, but Chuffer getting first blood. He's looking for a solo kill off screen there. Swiper was just surprised by Jana coming back to the bottom lane at the perfect time. Exhaust, summon a heal use. Aurelia falls down. That's early advantage to the Dire Wolves. And a good bait there for the Wolves. Maybe a bit unfortunate that King didn't get the kill, but a kill's a kill here as first blood does fall to them. The tower, though, will go down nice and early. We talked about the Dials not liking to lose those turrets early. They'll lose one very early in this game. And a kill for a trade for an outer turret, you definitely take the outer turret as the trade. They're just making sure the maximum amount of blue minions die to this turret before the turret eventually falls down. Probably expect Raider to want to get the kill credit for the extra gold, picks it up happily, and that's first turret and global advantage to the Chiefs. And even maybe going to pull the wave off and go for another freeze again. But we'll see what they do want to do. Swiffer still trying to push things out. Lots of wave clear here in the mid lane. Sharp, a little bit behind in CS actually. Swiffer slightly ahead there, but hasn't been able to leave the lane quite yet for that first destiny. He definitely hasn't been pressured. Actually been able to pick up an 8 CS advantage. Now getting blue buff, working his way towards... 40% CDR actually already has about 25% or more with the very early CDR boots. He's been able to get through this lane without even having to pick up any defensive statistics whatsoever and is confident enough, even against a lot of CC coming through from the dials, to pick up those early CDR boots. I mean, what do you think of the build here from Swiffer? Because that is very fast as the Destiny has got pop now as well. Maybe just going to get some vision, but they're in the top lane. The Dragon going to go down there for the Wolves, but Perfection goes down. And again, it started. The dials will get the Dragon, but poor Perfection. He remembers this, and not very fondly. No, he does not respond, remember this fondly at all. 28-35 CS behind, but crucially already multiple members entering his lane. They're going to continue freezing the wave to add insult to injury. Up top, we see Aurelia freezing the wave and perfection. He found camps I didn't think he could get at level 1, but at this point, the actual lane experience seems very difficult for him to pick oh, up. King going aggressive onto Radia. That's going to force the ulti. Soul Strikes here, looking for the slow, but a good flash from Radia will get him out from under it. Going to go turn aggressive now, will Radia as he looks for potentially a spell shit onto the tornado. The Dials will push the minions off the turret and they're going to try and take their first now. He's actually able to spy over to Swiffer's runes. He's already got 35% CDR, obviously running some scaling CDR blue runes. 35% CDR means that this Destiny, even at level 1, it's going to be surprisingly short. And if you use it off cooldown, you are going to catch Dials off guard. Yeah, and actually Rosie lining up now. Good tornado there from Chuffer to disengage, but no monsoon there available. Valkyrie will get forced away. Couldn't find the... 
it's less slippery target and King gets away. No depth charge available for Rosie is the critical factor in that situation. Needed the extra knock up. Okay, Nautilus needed another CC. Feels a bit cruel, but needed in that situation just to allow Gragas to hit a pinpoint barrel. So are they able to get out with the Valkyrie? Yeah, it looks like the blue buff will get contested. Those Sharp rotating in, stolen away by Spooks there. And again, Sharp gets denied another blue. And now Soul Strike's falling behind the experience. Still one camp away from six. Spooks going to be comfortably six. The blue taken away from Sharp. You might think, okay, Sharp's already got the Chalice. He doesn't necessarily need the mana regen, but just the cooldown reduction to be able to match the pushing from Swiffer. If he gets outpushed and outroamed by Swiffer, that sounds like an MVP potential performance from Swiffer. If he's able to make his impact felt in other lanes with the Destiny, he's already got that second Destiny available. Yeah, back ready to go here as Chuffer will join into the top lane, just trying to tornado down the waves and get the lane reset a bit. King will rotate in. Fade plus Sheen, his current item. So looking pretty good for an early Trinity Force here at ATCS. Quite even with the Sivir Swiper going in, but King comes back through and Swiper remembers what happened last time, gives it up. Swiper backs away, so in this situation he's doing just fine though. The Twisted Fate Destiny, we're waiting to see which lane that'll be cheating towards at this point. Just happy to wave clear. He has all the options. Does he want to stay and just match the wave clear with the Zerth? Does he want to exit lane and have the Gragas take over mid lane? The unique factor about the jungle Gragas pastry time is that he actually has pretty good uh, ranged wave clear himself. He can happily come to the mid lane and make things up. Soul Strikes actually goes yeah, in. Yeah, going in. That was the ulti you heard there from Sion coming through as Rosie does get slowed up. Knock up moving through. Sharp will find some damage, but it's on to Swift. A nice little mind game there. Time. Ulti coming through. Not no ball to land, flashes the last one just in case, and Swiffer gets to safety. The 100 unit vertical horizontal flash is actually enough for him to stay alive. Doesn't have distortion boots, that's a five second cooldown on the flash. Nice smooth moves from Chief Swiffer. And King doing some battle rolls in the top lane, wanting to get some damage done to the turret. I like the rotation here, perfection. Picked up a little bit more CS, but still struggling 44 to 65, and they're both honestly looking for some early item spikes, but Aurelia will just peak a little sooner. Absolutely, and Aurelia working towards the Trinity Force, like you said. Hasn't been a lot of jungle pressure this game. That's going to be kind of the unique factor after the MVP level performance from Spooks. Hasn't been able to find a kill involvement. Similar story with Sion. You'd say that probably advantages Sion just a little bit, just because Sion happy to farm camps. Already has the Cinder Hulk, which double scales with his W passive on that shield. Just happy to just power down camps. Gragas is positioned aggressively in the enemy jungle, though. Yeah, we'll see how that works out. Spooks trying to, again, cover the top side of the lane. But I have a Twisted Fate build I think you're going to like, Papa Smithy. Very different stuff here from Swift. We already discussed the cooldown runes, the early cooldown builds. Now with the distortion, but that, my friend, is an early Lich Bane an coming. An early Lich Bane. The reason why you might want to go there is no necessary tank, but the Destiny's pop. Well, we'll see what happens. No Lich Bane yet, but he's going to move in. Spooks will find Chopper, but a good monsoon might disengage. Great ulti there from Spooks, but a flash out from Chopper. Rosie follow flashes, locked up there with the dredge line, and Chopper looking to go down wild cards just wide as Chopper shields himself just in case but Swiffer has popped the ghost he's lost his card though can't quite go in for the stun but gonna throw in some autos instead and Ghost they're able to chase him off red card gets the kill yeah, the Ghost was the big factor in that situation Boots 2 and Ghost able to match the natural movement speed from Janna Spooks, I thought he was going to be able to pick up a much easier kill there, but it's actually an excellent shocking orb coming through for disengage from Sharp, but not enough. And again, Swiffer's twist of fate, but lots of early aggression here, w moving in for that Lich Bane and doing lots of damage to the poor Squishy Janna early on. And look, if you have a strong tank lane that Swiffer can't... Oh. Yeah, Sharp now getting altered in there. Swiffer falls in with a gold cut. Soul Strike running in massive, but Spooks is diving in there as well on the Gragas. Sharp going to get low. We'll go down to Raider King soon to follow as Gragas gets the next one. Perfection off to the side. Going to go in. Nautilus already down to the Scion, but Perfection forced to flash away, and the Chiefs grouped as five in mid. Yeah, two for one trade, and importantly getting both the AD carry, both Sharp's defensive summoners and the kill onto Sharp. They want to keep pushing. They're tower diving now. Perfection on top of the barrel does get moved in there. Swiffer will come in. Rady with the damage as well. Last minute exhaust by Chopper will actually save Perfection's life but cannot save the turret. Yeah, if they take the outer turret, this is the second outer turret. They're going to have complete control over the top side of the jungle and yes, they pick it up. Chiefs rotating so well. By far the faster team to collapse five members into middle. And you know what? We tried to bring it up a few times but I think I understand why Swift is going for this build. I mean, the Lich Bane Usually when you're against strong CC laners or champions that can deal with you in a side lane push like a Zed, you don't want to opt into a Lich Bane first because you won't be able to split push. It's definitely a split push focus or fast push build. Fast push was the name of the game in game one. It might actually be the name of the game in game two when he's so close to 40% CDR already. With those CDR runes, he doesn't need to rush necessarily for any more CDR. 
apart from what he already has in terms of the boots. And Sharp's overextended, no defensive summoners. He's dead. Yeah, he gets locked up there. No, he's protected Ooh. by the Dialors. Wildcard's going in, but not enough there for Sharp. Zareth will live for now, and the Dialors defend their teammate. He cheats death this time, but was just far too overextended on the blue side of the jungle. They want to pick up a second dragon. They do not have Zareth available for it, but no vision in this area means the Chiefs can't contest. Yeah, and the Dialors, that'll be the second dragon actually coming through. The first one basically just from early rotations, but uncharacteristically almost two early dragons going to the dial it's not until perfection gets more items it's going to be relevant and he's caught again well, he's going to get camp still here spook's going to go in great pull will keep him alive but the barrel moves in boomerang blade as well and rosie going to collect that one and this is very reminiscent of the second opl game for the chiefs and dial wars they just followed around perfection wherever possible and took him down they're doing it again king's actually found by a twist of fate in middle lane looks like he'll be able to get away but should be another turret sharp ulting in raider going to use the ulti force to flash a soul strike great Ben there with the ulti but Rosie stops him in his track and walks away happily Spooks is caught in the middle of two members uh, gonna get stunned up there damage coming through King will get that kill so a good move for Corky and now with the Trinity Force much stronger than he was in the lane but already you're looking for spots for the team to group and push in you don't necessarily see them even the mid lane is looking a bit optimistic against the Twisted Fate with Destiny still available and Swiper's hard freezing in the bottom lane working towards his Trinity Force he's gonna be so uh, faster in his part times when it comes to item pickups. Already ahead in gold, and this Vlad so far behind. Yeah, a little late on the Trinity Force for Swiper. Normally would like to have it completed by now, but Perfection's even further behind here. Yes, has his core items, but these are laning, uh, laning items here for Perfection. He hasn't really been in a lane for quite a while. And he's basically been forced into CDR boots just to have any semblance of relevancy in a fight. Going to be able to kip up those consistent damage on the Tides of Blood. And as you mentioned, the Hextech Revolver for lane pressure. Vladimir, we always expect him to have a 3-4 item power spike. Looking like a long time to those items come through. Yeah, and if the Dials struggle to get to their late game scalings in the last game with the Chiefs pressure, game two might be an even harder affair, but not a massive lead here right now. Just 3,000 for the Chiefs, building up an edge as Swiffer gets his blue buff, but plenty of wiggle room here for the Dials, and how much can they get here? They have to stop fighting back in this mid game. And they finally have red wards on both sides of the mid lane toe just to get information about where Twisted Fate is roaming, but with their base broken at this way, the, uh, sorry, the outer mid turret broken, a lot of safe places from Twisted Fate to port around. It's too early in the game to have sweepers on the enemy team. So Twisted Fate feels like he's already gotten better than expected in terms of the early game. Because when you break the enemy turret first as Twisted Fate, suddenly any lane is a safe spot to port into. Yeah, just more space to use that semi-global ultimate and just get around for the ganks. Kind of funny that both teams are playing very similarly at this stage of the game. Both using their top laners who need some farm after all the swapping, going into those empty lanes and trying to freeze and collect a lot of farm as the rest roam as four. I like that the Wolves are sticking together with their Corky in particular, but Rosie down the bottom might try and catch on to Chaffa. Swiper here as well, and Swift is going to join the party. Going to come in quite aggressively, stuns in onto Chaffa. Damage will come through. Swiper going to dive in, but the ulti will disengage. Spooks though around the side. King going to be the next target as Exhaust lands in. Cards there for moving in for Swiffer, and kill does go to Spooks. And this is the downside of the Zareth pick. All you can do in this situation where multiple members show up bot is just try and wave clear and slowly DPS down a turret just to answer the turret that was taken for the Chiefs. But this will be a third outer turret going down for the Chiefs and they're not going to stop pushing. No, they're going to keep going on and we've seen it again from the Chiefs. Love to push down the tier twos early if they can and just get extra gold and extra pressure. Makes even more sense with the Twisted Fade as Soul Strikes does come in to defend. He's got his Cinderhulk ready to go and has decent wave clear with the max out Q there instead. But Spook's even going to take away the Gromp from him and Dial starting to lose a bit of traction in and this that game. that situation, why it's so safe to keep pushing is that you can always rotate to mid and if Zerath stays overextended doing turret damage, you can always gank him in mid because he has no outer turret to defend himself. It's already been taken down early. Perfection finally pushing up this top lane is eventually going to take out an outer turret to start answering, but still, he's sitting on 1,800 gold. I don't know if there's a big enough purchase to match the Trinity Force from Aurelia. Yeah, and that's the question. Can Perfection match the Aurelia? Because once Aurelia tips that balance of the lane, it gets very tricky. Swiffer going to charge in there onto Chuffer. Good zone there, but Radiant too much damage. Exhaust a little late. Now Swiffer chasing in. He's actually going in onto Sharp, who cleanses out. Now Swiffer, who might have gone too aggressive, going to move back into Radiant. Rosie looking for the dredge line flash, but Sharp flashes out. Soul Strike will go down instead as Radius starting to rack up kills. Ulti there moving through, but just out of range. And the picks continue from the Chiefs. It's not on the back of Spooks this game. It's they, they compensate for the Gragas, who doesn't have quite the early game of an Elise jungle in terms of pressure, with Twisted Fate running rampant in the enemy base. Rosie's caught. 
not going to fall down. Yes, he will. Perfection going in. Hemo Plague ticking away. Will give him the kill. Spooks diving in. King in there as well. Good ulti there from Spooks. Gets him away now. Swiffer will rejoin the party. King locked up. Far too aggressive will go down to Spooks. Perfection going to get chased in as well. He'll dodge the stun. Beautiful pull. Cards just a little wide, but Perfection will go down eventually. A double kill for Gragas. A double kill for Gragas. Now 4-1-2 himself. I believe in general, Dai was just not respecting the low cooldown on Chief Swiffer's destiny. It's been available so, so often in the early. That's the fourth relevant destiny usage at 19 minutes. And again, all this CDR early on into the build. The aggression of the Lich Bane. He's rotated beautifully. Six assists there in that column, maybe not what he wants, but you can tell just how much presence he's had on this map. So 80% kill participation is the much more relevant stat coming through from the Destiny. Gragas himself only involved in half the kills because you can afford to take a lower pressure jungler and it's arguable how much lower pressure, but we're going to see the replay coming out here. Rosie, after the transfusion is dead, will fall to the Hemo Plague. They keep fighting in this situation, but it's the Destiny being available again that's the big factor. The fight's looking good until the Destiny is channeled and King, the Lich Bane burst damage is huge coming through from the Twisted Fate. Perfection keeps overextending in this situation. Manages to pull the gold card, but Swooks will clean up the fight and another win for the Chiefs. Yeah, double there for Gragas and another overextension by King and Perfection. They're trying to get aggressive. King really only plays one way and that's forward toward you. They're backering or flashing forward to try and get some kills but dragging up. Now Chiefs actually don't have one so will be happy to get this one but the dial just looks like they're in no spot to contest for this. You just feel like in previous games against other teams the dials they wouldn't be opting for those aggressive fights. They'd be hanging back. They'd be playing the farm game. That's what they're always known for is playing the long long farm games as Chiefs pick up their first dragon of the game. But in this game against Arthur they've just been punished by a Chiefs team out rotating in game one. You feel like they're getting the specters of that game one and game two, trying to match the rotational power of the Chiefs, just with a comp that in general doesn't rotate as well as the Chiefs does. I mean, you can't really out rotate a Twisted Fate. That's the problem. It's not just that the Chiefs are probably better at it. It suits their style, certainly from what we've seen. More so than the Dialors, but Twister Fate's just everywhere now on top of the top lane with Perfection coming through. Swiper diving in. Rosie's here as well. Perfection. There's a good more pull. CC coming. I mean, yeah, there's plenty left here. Rosie will lock him up. Uh, Swiper in there, and Swiffer actually gets it with some wild cards. And Swiffer actually got the Destiny gold card in as Perfection was channeling his teleport to escape. So teleport's not available. They do take out another outer turret. That's three outer turrets to match the Chief's earlier three outer turret goal. Diwalls at least they're trying to match, and with the Trinity Force on Corky, they're using that to pick up structures. So in terms of their win conditions, definitely more on top of them this game than they were in the previous one. And they one. can still let Vladimir go big and carry them in the late stages of this game. They're confident in their late game team fighting, confident in Perfection's ability to carry a game, and it's much closer now. And I like that the Wolves have been fighting back here in the mid game. But I think you just need to really employ the buddy system if you're the Diwalls. The issue is that Vladimir can never just solo push or solo farm, because he'll be killed by the rotation power coming through of the Twisted Fate. In general, the, the way to beat a Twisted Fate is to stay grouped as five and force things yourself. Because if you split up, we already mentioned it, he's going to rotate faster than anybody else. And it's interesting to not see a Twisted Fate ban as a result there from Swiffer because what you just described to me there, grouping up as five and stopping the Twisted Fate, sounds like the complete opposite of the Dial of current play style. I mean, you just... You want to hope that you can keep Twisted Fate contained, but if Sharp's champion pool doesn't include the likes of LeBlanc and Ari, we've seen one Ari game, no LeBlanc game play from him. I believe the Ari game was a loss as well. If you don't feel like you can pressure the Twisted Fate, I guess you have to ban it because they're not able to answer. Their natural style is countered by just how Twisted Fate plays. Yeah, and we've seen that here in this game. 12 to 5 up in kills for the Chief. A good chunk of gold ahead as well, behind in dragons and even in turrets. So the dial is doing a good job with objectives here in this game, but... Those kills, man, everyone just racking up. I mean, Twisted Fate at 3 0 and 6, everyone getting stronger. Even four kills for the jungler, but Swiper. We talked about it. He can look to take over this game. Two items up for Radiant and almost the Zonia's here for TF. But this is the issue. You look at this minimap, Twisted Fate happily in the bottom lane. He's actually going to put in aggressively. Yeah, going in there onto King this time. Rosie joins in. Depth Charge is used there to lock him up. Good hook though, landing onto Chaffa. Spooks wants in. Chaffa will get moved back in and Swiffer will get that kill next. Now going to line up the next gold card with the Ghost still ticking away. And it could be a Siege. I mean, Twisted Fate in this position, he sets up in bottom lane, has Lich Bane, does a lot of turret damage himself, so you have to answer him. But also the mid lane has to play defensively, as Sharp has been doing all game. So there's just so much pressure on this bottom side of the map, and they've forced into a Vlad versus Aurelia matchup, where Aurelia just has so many items on the Vlad. Yeah, we can see, trying to defend off here, King a little low. Has to be careful, Swiffer probably happily 
diving him here at this stage of the game, but no ulties quite back up yet. They'll back away, actually, despite no major objectives. So Xerath Wave Clear coming up trumps there as far as keeping that tower alive, and they'll keep it even for now. I mean, the Destiny right now is already on a 100-second cooldown. I believe starts at 200, so lets you know just how much the CDR is doing from level 6 to level 11, just from the levels. And then again with the basically 40% CDR when he has the blue buff. Yeah. 30% right now, I believe. So 40% with blue. With blue yeah, perfect stuff there coming through for Swiffer as far as CDR goes in the build. Now moving into a Void stuff, potentially maybe a Rabadons as well. Got the Blasting one for plenty of options there. And we can look through three upgraded trinkets for the Chiefs again. It's a close-looking game, but the Chiefs, with that extra gold, is getting a bit more purchase out of their items. I mean, it's rotational power again with the instant rotations of the Destiny and the On the Hunt. This time they have the Sivir. Such a high priority on the Sivir in this OPL final. First picked in both series. But again, first picked by Diwall's getting little to no pressure or presence out of the On the Hunt. But this game, with the Twisted Fate especially, their rotations have been so on point by the Chiefs. And I feel like the Chiefs picking this Aurelia to pick on perfection. Vladim is pretty tricky to lock down, but the Chiefs will rotate into the jungle and maybe look for soul strike scrying orb will spot them away as spooks gonna be the target now actually will body slam his way out as ulti's been popped by soul strikes rosie the target here radia has popped his ultimate though as they're looking for some kills there through the jungle but lots of cooldowns used and no kills anywhere right now oh hook landing in just hits on the king who's forced to fly ulti there onto sharp swipe around the back for a great flank they'll collapse there onto the dial of the swiffer looking in there hemo plague uh, position well perfection diving in deep there to try and get some kills great play there perfection gets rosie and soul strike will follow it swiffer going down there to scion and the wolves they fight back it was an excellent fight coming from the dials and the big factor was that the whole time king was free hitting on top of a pink while they had no vision of king to be able to trade damage so he free hit on corky corky with trendy force with sorcerer's shoes the mid game damage is definitely relevant and chiefs were not respecting and it king ramping up even more now blade of the ruined king is his second choice he wants to battle everyone here and even get a bit of self peel away from the aurelia so a second item you usually go for either the bloodthirst or blade of the king we're going to see the replay watch king in the back of course he first has to flash away but he will be free hitting the moment this fight starts Swiffer overextends looking for a gold card target that isn't Soul Strike, so he backs away. And despite the fact that Destiny has popped, King is free hitting in the backline. No one is able to damage. The Monsoon is excellent just for the healing factor in the backline. And finally, a team fight victory for the Direwolves. And we've talked about it. When they play together, they look good, especially when their carries have some items. And that gold lead, not that big at all. 4,000 gold now between the two teams. Corky getting stronger perfection now. Somehow has come up with 170 CS and some solid items. This is where the Wolves start to excel. And you start to look for trends in Chiefs games when they lose. There's only been the one, so it's it's hard to do, but Twisted Fate, that was the mid lane choice in that situation. At this point, the engaged support rather than disengaged support may come to haunt them. Because Sivir with her short range, she does a lot of team fight damage, but she has to respect tanks because of the 500 range in her fight. And without a disengaged support, she may struggle to actually use her uh, offensive abilities, her auto attack reset on W to really put out damage in a fight. Yeah, and Soul Strike from the jungle had a much better game for himself, just much more free time here on the Scion. Sure affected some lanes reasonably well, kept the pressure up a bit better than the last game on Sejuani, but Destiny gonna ride it for Swiffer, they're gonna go on, who do they want? It's perfection! They're gonna try and lock down the pool, is gonna follow through, and now Soul Strike's tanking up, ready, free hitting there as well, but the rest of the wolves rotating around King, forced to get away from the Nautilus ultimate though, and Swiper flashes on top of him, but Soul Strike will come into appeal, Swiffer Gonna look for some kills, they move in on top, Xerath goes down, Perfection will follow, King not dead, but he can't do anything right now, Soul Strikes will be the next one to fall, Swiper died zoning, but that's two for one for the Chiefs. But the zoning was so, so important, Patreon. that's why we saw Swiper flash on top of King. The Direwolves tried to react, they tried to peel for King, that left Xerath all on his lonesome, wasn't able to position defensively, wasn't around a cove, was just zerged down by the front line of, of Chiefs and fell. They need to fight around their carries, but in that situation, splitting focus, that's how it allowed the Chiefs to win. And Soul Strikes eventually dying, did, does make it three for one there as the Scion passive wears away. Second Dragon picked up there for the Chiefs, so equalizing that objective. Towers, interestingly, still both up here. It's just the outer ring felt for both, so lots of maneuvering 
hovering in the center of the map probably tells you that's been quite a close 10 minutes or so but the chiefs again still with that goal but not that big so we watch the replay they go so aggressive onto perfection trying to burst him down before he can pull he finally gets the option to pull but the re-engage comes onto king who just goes too aggressive into the back line so now dial's threats are completely separated chuffer first goes towards king then backs away sharp is caught out in this situation they need all their peel onto their two damage threats because if they split them that's what the chiefs do so well is they're always going to win, win rotations with the on the hunt with twist of fate with double mobility summoners and just with the fleet of foot passive coming through from Siva. and king interestingly actually has a qss as his third item there so wanting to stay protected can't shake off the nautilus ultimate unfortunately but can shake off the follow-up cc that's guaranteed from that point spooks can still get in there with the dragon soldier but sharp's gonna be the target massive grab comes through and swiper cleans that one there's just no way that sharp can be that far down the lane against a twisted fake up has to respect the engagement of twisted fake gragas nautilus so much cs cleanse was available but hell why cleanse when you're just going to be dead to the next cc yeah too much cc there coming through spooks maybe gonna look for an ultimate here moving someone back maybe get them off the turret as the chiefs will look for a siege aggressive wards coming down and those tier two turrets finally gonna look to fall and while they're short range turrets they do so much turret damage and going in for a dive actually zoning king away there with the nautilus ultimate damage coming through perfection trying to find it but cards just moving in for swiffer and the chiefs get their first tier two yeah between twisted fate and Siva, you're talking about perhaps the most turret damage of any ad carry mid lane duo the lich bane and of course the cards the magical damage affecting turrets and Siva with the auto attack cancel does so much damage to the turrets herself okay they're not the safest but when you have a zoning uh Zoning Depth Charge come through from Nautilus. Have to respect that, of course, uncleansable initiation CC. The turrets, they continue to fall. And they're really feeling for the lack of peel here for Sharp, who finally going to go back and probably get his rabbit on, which has been delayed for so long in this game. 31 minutes in, and he just gets it. I mean, look, the question is, how do you peel away the Depth Charge? You just can't. Even if you have Banshee Veil, it goes through that ability. Uh, this, with Ajana complaining about a lack of peel, that just shows the reality of how strong and how many varied initiations options they have because you can't gr you can't uh, see a uh, QSS away Gragas ultimate displacement you can't QSS the Riptide or so the um, death charge coming through from Nautilus Twisted Fate can come from so many angles and speaking of initiation he's going after King yeah going on to King oh. Ghost already popped massive damage there from the Lich Bane pick a card will be following back in Soul Strikes comes in but a great Sonya is there gonna dodge that ulti now Spook's gonna go in onto Soul Strikes as the next target Radio doing massive damage on the Siva Rosie finds Chopper with the hook massive damage Damage gives Nautilus that kill and Dials, they're going to lose another tier two. It could have been so much worse. The QSS was actually popped before the gold card registered. So the CC duration was the complete two seconds. The follow-up CC from Gragas came in. They only get the single pick. But all this time, Aurelia just farming down the bottom. Banshee Veil to complement that Trinity Force. Only going to get stronger. Yeah, and Swiper had a quiet Aurelia game, which is not what we would have said after seeing him play in the semifinals. But Spooks and Swift at that age-old duo been just doing work here. And Swiper only needs to be a role player in this game, but that's fine. He's done just that. And the Twist of Fate has definitely overtaken the game. 15 out of 19 kill participation. Again, around the 80% mark. Gragas definitely had a quieter game, but been very useful. And, and that's the thing. As Zereth, where do you position against Gragas Barrow? against the depth charge from Nordus and against the Twisted Fate Destiny. Even if you position right down the back of the fight, Twisted Fate can just come and join you. Yeah, Swift are looking for a Destiny now as well, potentially. It does have it back, ready to go. That CDR build paying off nicely here. Don't see where the blasting one. I could have sworn he had one, but... Doesn't win. Oh, never mind. He actually finished his death cap. I found he, it. He turned it into a death cap. You knew it was going to be the ability power. It helps with his split push more than the void stuff. The magic resist stack, it's just not there from the Dials yet, to be honest. Only really the, the chalice into the Athene's Unholy Grail and just working towards the Abyssal Scepter is perfection. So why not just go for instant wave clear push, instant global pressure? Yes, yeah, Swiffer coming in, looking again for people overextending. And we talked about the Dials play style. Perfection overextending for farm. King overextending for farm. King actually quite significant down in CS this game and you can see when he tries to overextend to pick up those extra creeps that he loves to get Swiffer is always ready with a destiny you can see the aggression coming in the trees just from their pink water and they have two pink wards in the jungle of the Dire Wars. They have lots of red wards coming out defensively now, but Swiffer, he has an Oracle's sweeper of his own, pushing up aggressively. Can't get a solo kill on Vladimir with all his escape options, but can still instantly clear these waves and cause so much pressure across the map. And we talk about Dire Wars needing to peel for their two damage threats. We saw when they get separated especially that things do look troublesome here for the Wolves, but you know, you might be thinking, what about Perfection? He's a massive damage threat on Vlad. Sure, just not yet. <laughs> 
He's getting there, though. I mean, the three items at this point he cost has the, the stasis and the pool for five seconds of untarget ability. He has the Void Staff, respecting the double Banshee Veil Lock. It's such an important Void Staff in this game in particular because the magic resist, honestly, is insane. Even Nautilus has a Spectre's Cal of all things from the support role. So Vitamin is doing relevant damage, but I feel like you're one item short of really starting to rip apart teams with the consistent damage of a Vladimir. And you just need to keep perfection one item behind here on the Vlad. It's not quite 10,000 gold ahead for the Chiefs, closer to 8 now as they're going to line up for their third Dragon and the fifth overall in the game. And the Dials, they can't quite get for this one. Okay, probably okay to give this up, but again, how far will they fall behind you before they're ready to fight? Because we saw in the last game, the game went quite long and the Dials just couldn't find a foothold back. And the worry you see from the Dials is that, look, we know that Swift has been anchored to the top lane, keeps pushing it out. Aurelia is controlling the bot lane minion wave, and in the mid lane they've just been matching it with, with, with farming. Destiny pop, though. Yeah, Swift are going in there onto Soul Strikes, who does actually get the knockup. Rosie coming through again with the teleport, moving in for perfection, you have to think. Going into the back lines, Raid is zoned off. Soul Strikes tanking massive amounts of damage, but on the hunt, just moving Radier in. Soul Strikes does go down. Perfection ulti's in the back. The Dials trying to fight back here, but Perfection too low. Forced to flash away. Chuffle will keep them alive, but he flashes out as well. Only the one kill onto the jungler, but the Chiefs just healthier than the Direwolves. See the reinitiation. Vladimir's going to move away. Driving on there. Swiper will go in and Paul used a little early. Zonya's there as well for Vlad, and Swiper gets the next kill. Swiffer is an insane genius of Twisted Fate, but he actually flashed on top of the Scion ultimate to cause the knockup to be able to stop the Scion and pick up the Scion kill. Scion's still dead. They can think about doing Baron, but they guarantee that outer top turret. Yeah, just a couple kills in a turret. Not a massive payoff there for the Chiefs, but a win there nonetheless. Now 10,000 gold ahead. Upper Dragon here as well, starting to take the tier 2 turrets away. And Sharp looking a bit lonely here in the top lane. Destiny back up soon. He can't stay here for too long. But they have both mid turrets, both Top turrets, outer and inner, both down. Suddenly, this Baron with the pink wards they've had up for so long is looking very, very safe. And the Baron, especially, will tip this game towards the Chiefs. And we've looked so much here at the Twisted Fate 4 1 and 12 bevy of items that raided right just quietly. An even better score 5 1 and 10. He went in the Bloodthirster third again, now has his last whisper, just spoiled for damage right now. And definitely vindicating the first pick, Sivir, that just didn't seem to do a lot of work for King and the Direwolves in game one. Such priority on Sivir. But the rotations have been on point. The damage at this point is so, so relevant. And even with a tank like Scion, he's able to cut through the front line and start getting massive damage to the back line as well. Yeah, we saw that before. Radio basically going Graves mode, just getting in melee with the ultimate in that last fight and having confidence in his team to keep him up as he run, runs through with the fleet of foot passive. The Chiefs look scary right now, and the Direwolves in a big hole just have to sit back, farm, and hope for the best. I mean, the Direwolves want to farm up, and they just want to give away the minima. At this point, they cannot afford to give away a Baron, but they haven't been in range of putting down Baron Vision for a very long time. So Baron started. Soul Strikes, he's close, but the Baron's at 5,000 health. Will they continue DPSing or will they peel off? It looks like they'll go the defensive route. They peel away, but the Chiefs are so confident that Swiffer is in the bottom lane pushing on Twisted Fate. King even going to potentially get caught there as well. And we talked about Twisted Fate split push with the Lich Bane. Haven't seen it until now, but the Chiefs, just so many options at and this point. And that's the sixth and final outer turret. It's collapsed by the Chiefs. They have all the turrets available. Swift is waiting for a pick. Five members strong, though. It's Dial's a group, and 37 minutes in, they're not going to separate and allow any assassination from TN. No, Sharp will get the blue. Can't actually deny it there. Will Swiffer just goes home instead and finishes the Void stuff now. So four damage items done for Swiffer. No one is safe now from the Twisted Fate Destinies. Not that they really were before. And unfortunately for Dial's, that's not just their champions. Their turrets now under attack by the Twisted Fate. I mean, all the outer turrets are down. All the inner turrets are down. Things are looking excellent for the Chiefs because having all those globals, those structures down, it's not just the globals. Global gold coming through, which of course was nerfed on patch 5.6. You don't get as much gold for inner turrets. It's again this Baron Vision. They have actually forced to use the Xerath ultimate just to get uh, to peek into whether there's any Baron threat coming through from the Chiefs. Yeah, a bit of a poke there onto Rosie, but not enough damage there for Sharp right now. Does have a Void Staff now, so respectable damage coming through for the Xerath. Same could be said there for King with his three items, but it's three items to four here for these mid and bottom lane carries. And again, it's been the story of the series so far. The Chiefs just always one or two steps ahead of the Wolves. And for once, Die Wars, they don't have any measurable scaling advantages in the late game. It's not like we're going to reach a stage where Xerath is a stronger champion than Twisted Fate. Vladimir and Aurelia, you could definitely argue either way. Maybe a slight tip to 
Vladimir, but I mean, Corky versus Sivir, if anything, you probably give the advantage to Sivir in that matchup. Probably does more tank busting, especially, so he's going to be able to mow down the high health but low resistance perfection in the front line and Soul Strikes to some degree, although you never really mow down a side. No, and Spook's actually just showing a. Uh Soul Strike something there as he does use the body slam. Soul Strikes will ultimate though. He's going to initiate, try to find Radio, but Radio dodges out of the way. And Swiffer still in the top lane, pushing away. The Chiefs just buying time. Yeah, the Diewalls, they need to win a team fight. They need to win it quick or their base is going to be completely ruined. No bad news for the base. The inhibitor goes down there as King goes forward onto Swiper. Good damage coming in, but Twisted Fate should be able to join in soon. There's the Destiny popping right onto the carries. Get sharp there with a gold card. Pops the Zonias. Chiefs getting zoned away. Swiffer actually now has to run as well. Ultimate's coming through. Looking for the stun, flashes the way, ulti's not quite there, Spook's going back in, Radiant gonna get the kill onto Vlad, now chasing it onto Soul Strikes as the double comes through, Chiefs chasing them down, there's three kills it looks like across the board, Radiant gonna kite the dead Scion away, and the Chiefs base already broken, they keep going. Yeah, three for one, Twisted Fate and Siva both alive, this inhibitor turret will explode. That was a crazy fight as well, all across the map, splitting up the dials again, but this structure's warm out, inhibitor tower goes down, in Inhibitor in mid is soon to fall, and the Chiefs can't end the game right now, but there is not a lot left for the Wolves to defend. There's just no good decisions for the Diwas. They finally find a fight that looks good. They know Swift has split away, but you just don't factor in the fact that your turrets will explode to Twisted Fate. You have to engage quickly and then get back to your base and stop even a Nexus turret from going down. But Swift gets the structure, able to pot in as the fight's in the process. They win the fight, they get both inhibitors down. Chiefs everything going their way. Yeah, Dragon back up, Baron still alive, Swiper down in the bottom lane actually going to pop down to collect a bit of extra farm for himself. Actually has a long sword there, so might be moving in for a second offensive item here after the Randu and Zerman plus the Banshee's Veil on top of that Trinity Force, of course. But you know things are going your way when you get both inhibitors and then able to walk down bot and get four or five minion waves grouped up to be cleared out. Everything coming together for the Chiefs. Yeah, another, another needlessly large rod there for Swiffer. Probably going for the Luden's Echo just because there are no other big AP items left here for him to buy. Twist of Fate in the top side of the map. The Dial is looking for a dragon, going to equalize for the third, but they have to be careful. They take too long. They're just going to lose their base They're here. They're going to lose their base. Actually, they have the teleport up on Vlad, but I don't think he can handle this Twisted Fate. We're going to go in. Spook steals the dragon anyway. Beautiful smite in there. Perfection. Now going to get aggressed on Swiffer walking down, but the Chiefs just want to buy time. Ultimate's popped by Radiant. They're going to try and deny some backs, and Rosie round the side, going to dodge away, and again, just being annoying by time for the twisted fate first nexus turret goes down perfection gonna buy some time here as well but should go down there flashes away but gets killed second nexus turret goes down swiffer gonna get chased it's king in trouble the zonis pop there by the twisted fate can he get the solo not quite but it might be too much here well this is four members they're just gonna run straight onto this nexus and finish the game yeah casual triple kill there for radiant chopper gonna flash into his fountain will go down in step with the chiefs they can start to feel a bit more celebration now in the seats, as you can see, one game away from their first title in a year. Absolutely. They have three opportunities now, the Chiefs, from picking up the victory here and going to Turkey for the International Wildcard Invitational. Very impressive rotational performance from them. And the Twisted Fate, we waited to see what could Sharp counterpick with that fifth pick to deal with that uh, Twisted Fate. And the answer was Zareth, which at best was only going to match Wave Clear. Can't punish the Twisted Fate. He goes over and wins the game. And we talked about it. TF just looked like a champion that was designed to counter the way the Dials like to play. And honestly, in that game, I think I have to agree. If you have a confident counter pick, maybe you take the risk. But if you're Sharp, who's more used to those Wave Clear champions that can't punish the Twisted Fate, you got to ban it. And I mean, I, we might just see a ban coming up in this third game. Three match points here effectively for the Chiefs is, is great news for them. But I don't know what the Wolves have to answer because, again, it's been a fairly predictable playstyle for them. And that's the thing. They've consistently gone for long laning faces, scaling up into the late game. Twisted Fate it punishes anybody who's overextended as a, as a single member. The Diwas, they don't like early grouping. They have long game times in general. Ten minutes longer on average than the Chiefs in the playoff stages. They were punished for it. Well, with that, we'll get a bit more info as we throw out to the arena with Atlas and Spawn. Thank you very much, Pastry Time. And a closer game there by the Dial of Spawn, but 
not quite able to do it. And what was their early plan? The early plan for both of these teams? Yeah, so it looked like the lane swap was initiated from the Chiefs in that one. They went for the early four-man invade against the Dire Wolves. They've pulled it off once before, just looking to get Perfection behind. In the end, it looked like Perfection actually had a better jungle follow, and Sion was able to get a couple of levels ahead, which made the early game look much better. Couple it with the fact that they were actually able to pick up First Blood onto their support in a 2v1 in the bottom lane, where Swiper went a little little bit too aggressive. It just looked like they had a couple of answers early that weren't there in game one. Yeah, we'll see whether they can carry it through. And speaking of sort of early things happening in this game, the Civa priority that's been happening here, it's sort of reminiscent of much earlier in the season. What's with the resurgence of Civa? Yeah, it's just that both teams really value positioning around map. And if you're against the Chiefs, you know that they're going to rotate very early and often. And Civa gives you a lot of tools to be able to A, set that up, or if you're a you have the Sivir on your team, catch them out in the jungle. So they're using that more as a utility-based champion, still does great AoE team fighting damage. If it stays in the mid game, can deal with the tanky picks. Late game does struggle, but it just looks like the Chiefs want to finish up every game before the really 35 minute mark and just get insurmountable gold leads. Well, it does seem to be what they're managing to do here. And what I want to talk about facilitating that is Swiffer's TF pick and his rather unique item build order. Yeah, he certainly did go for something a little bit different, prioritizing the CDR boots as a first Into major Lich pickup. Bane? Into Lich Bane's for some extra ganking pressure with that mm -hmm. movement speed some of the burst damage it was just all about keeping perfection down he is so good particularly on vladimir that they just want to keep hitting him hard and early make sure he never turns into this late game carry and so far it really looks like it's working it certainly does of course sort of the other star player here for the direwolves is king on this corky we saw a little bit of an awkward qss there on the top side of the map but i just want to talk about corky just in general here and how it fit in that comp because sort of against the super tanks of 5.6 it's not generally what we've been been seeing. Yeah, so what they were looking for there is some mid-game insurance with the Xerath, with the corking, mm. making sure they had the wave clear to defend their turrets this time around. Okay. What it did mean, however, is that they over-prioritized magic damage. And I just want to talk about boots for a little bit here because he went the Sork boots against a very tanky lineup. I think that that was a bad choice. It is a very good two-item swipe with the Trinity Force and boots. But the other boots that were interesting were Perfection's boots. Yeah. Actually went with a cooldown reduction, which means he's not running scaling cooldown reduction blues. And against a TF, against the Aurelia, against the Nautilus, there is just so much CC. The Vlad could have got much more work done early if they were going into the swap with some mercury trades keep him later in the late game yeah well we'll see whether they're going to do that next time around but of course moving into this next game what are each of these teams going to be trying to do you could imagine the chiefs probably just want to do the same thing again but what did direwolves change moving into game three direwolves need an early game comp they need a fight they need to get ahead well we'll see if they can do that as we hop into game three after this short break